Hello Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I'm very excited to have you here. We're gonna dive right into your reading. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. Um, I, you know, I am very happy to have you here. If you are a subscriber, if you are someone who regularly comments, likes, shares, thank you so much for your continued support. I really do appreciate you. Um, and gosh, guys, just keep in mind, this is a general reading, so take what resonates and leave the rest. Spirit for Pisces, for Pisces. What are we talking about for Pisces? Whoa. All right, <clears throat> Pisces, you're getting soulmate connection and eternal union. You have a very strong, significant moment coming up here when it comes to connections, I feel like. Um, you may either be meeting someone or this may be a situation that's changing around a situation that you are already aware of that exists. Um, let me, I mean, dive deeper. What else can you tell me about this spirit? What else can you tell me? What can you tell me about this person of Pisces? Keep in mind, these are general messages. Oh my gosh, resilience of manifestation. So, um, you know, uh, sometimes I just leave YouTube playing in um, my background. You know, I just, it'll just be playing. Like um, yesterday I was baking cookies and it was just playing in the background. And some video came up. I don't even know who it was. I guess I could see because uh, I can probably look at my history or something. But it was like this woman and this man, and they made a recording because they had manifested each other. And um, they were talking about how bizarre it was. I don't know how they met, but she was in England and he was in the United States. And she was tired of being the caretaker of the man in every situation she was in. And so she wanted someone who owned their own home. Like she thought if they own their own home, then they're not coming expecting me to just take care of them and deal with everything in this relationship. And he was in the United States. He had had a really bad breakup and had just moved uh, from California to North Carolina to be with his mom. And his mom had moved to North Carolina to be with a guy and they'd broken up and she wanted to go back to New Jersey where she was from. And so he was like, well, let me, let me look into it. And so he called a realtor and he was like, um, can I look at houses? And like, there was even a story that was showed signs and synchronicities in it about the way he found his house, but he ended up buying the house. At this time, he met this woman in England and they were talking back and forth. And so two weeks after he moved into his house, he flew to England to meet her. And they were like, that's it. We just found our person. She was also manifesting someone who was spiritual, who was, <clears throat> you know, all of these things. And, um, and, and he was all of those things. It was just so bizarre. And she was like, the problem that people have when they're manifesting is that they put too many limitations on it. She was like, you gotta just focus on the things that you want and you need, in, you know you need in a relationship and you have to trust that this person is gonna show up however they show up, whenever they show up. And like, it may be a really crazy situation where this person has just bought a house in New Jersey and you're in England and you know what I mean? It may be something like that, but like, when this thing comes together, when you meet that person and that person meets you, and this guy had, was also manifesting her and there were all these things that she was that he had particularly asked for in his manifestation. And they clearly recognized in each other that they were the person that the other had been manifesting. And um, why do I tell you all of this? Because you have this resilience of manifestation. Plus I always think that when something comes up like that um, in my, uh, video feed, there's uh, some kind of part of it that is probably for all of you or like some message. I feel it like the way I'm feeling that whole story um, in relation to this reading is the energy of not giving up hope on what you're manifesting. Um, you know, because both of these people were like, we were, we were, we were ready to say, 
you know, never, 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 never again, you know, am I dating? Am I, you know, getting involved in something like this? Um, and I feel that in these cards right here. So there may be something that you feel like, oh, it's just not happening. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing the result of my manifestation. I'm not seeing change in my person. I'm not seeing, I don't see how I'm going to meet someone new. You don't focus on the how when you're manifesting. You let the universe take care of that. You know, and, and, you know, I would be reticent maybe to even believe this story had it not been for the fact that I hear these stories. I've, I've heard them a lot. Um, you know, I, I know many people who have met or, you know, especially like people you meet in yoga studios and, you know, it's like there's, a, cause they are observant of signs and synchronicities. Other people are just like going through life and they don't even notice sometimes. So, um, but anyway, yeah. Um, so it says resilience of manifestation and it says bounce back from setback and emerge stronger. Phoenix rising from the ashes. It feels like a, a, wow, Phoenix rising from the ashes on this card. And yesterday, I think that was the first card that you started off with. You have so many signs and synchronicities in these cards. It is time, I think, Pisces, for you to double down on your manifestation, for you to re, re-infuse it with energy, with vision, with attention, with mindfulness, with belief, you know? Um, you have the gift of time management. This is interesting. <laughs> this reading is really interesting. I I feel like the time of this this the gift of now time management. It is like saying to me that if you are fully present in the moment, when we're fully present in the moment, first of all, we're seeing the signs and synchronicities that are available to us. Secondly, we are not anxious about our future. And you see this, I think my husband's coming home, guys, so my, my dog's probably going to talk. Um, this anx excessive anxiety and overwhelm, it's like, when we experience anxiety, it usually means that we're too focused on the future. We're too far ahead of ourselves. We're not, we're not in the present moment. Um, when we're depressed, conversely, it's because we're usually very focused on the past and we can't do anything to change it. And that constant feeling of disempowerment, of not being able to do anything about it, um, takes us into a place of depression. So with this energy of anxiety, it's, it's kind of giving me this energy of just stay really fully present in the moment and open up to all the possibilities. You know, start thinking, gosh, there may be someone out there manifesting me right now as I'm manifesting them. Start expanding the thought, expanding the feeling. Allow yourself to feel that. Wow, how does that feel? Someone is manifesting you. You know, someone is, is asking the universe for you in their life right now as, as we're having this conversation, you know, um, and try not to get too bogged down in the details, but just be accepting and receiving of that kind of energy. It, it really feels like this is about, you know, opening a channel, being happy and content with where you are right now, you know, living in the abundance of now and the beautiful stuff that is now. You know, we talk about gratitude on this channel, I think, a lot. Um, but, you know, having lost my sense of taste and smell. And, you know, I cook a lot. I mean, I really, like, love to show people care through cooking. And um, I have not been able to smell or taste. And this morning, my husband and I went, uh, like, we go on the Saturday morning, we go to the farmer's market and to this little bakery and get, like, sourdough bread. And I will pick up this tea. It's called black currant tea and it's um, so good. Iced tea. I love iced tea. And um, I got in the car and I said, there's something wrong with this tea. It doesn't have any flavor. My husband was like, hey, did you forget that you can't taste or smell? And I realized like I didn't smell the fresh bread smell. When I went into the store, I didn't smell it. And it's like, oh, I didn't like, I'm, I'm missing out on so many things that you know, in the present moment, make me feel alive and make me feel like, oh, yes, you know, I'm so fortunate. I'm so blessed. 
And it just circles you back to remember to always be grateful for your health, for your senses, for, you know, ah, all of those things. I can taste um, citrus and guava now and some, some really strong spices, but I'm doing the whole uh, essential oil thing. Thank you for the people that recommended that in the comments. Um, slowly but surely, guys, I'm going to get it back. I'm sure about it. Um, but it's saying <clears throat> that to me, there's just this energy of if you're present in the now and you open up to all the possibilities, including the possibility that someone is out there manifesting you right now. Um, and you know, this can even be friends. This can even be, you know, like whatever it is that you feel like your life is lacking or you think that your life would benefit from instead of focusing on the lack, focus on the abundance of now and call that stuff into you. Um, you know, you know, realize that, yeah, there are other people that are also feeling the same way and are looking for someone just like you. So, um, you have this opportunity and perseverance and I do feel it says conquest, spirit, untapped potential. Um, I feel like you, you are going to have some answered prayers or you're going to have some opportunities coming in to have what you want. And with this drama and camouflage, I'm just getting like, don't get too caught up in the way things look right now and on, you know, what it looks like is happening or isn't happening. You definitely have some, a very important connection, at least one coming in. And I feel like there's just this energy of, you know, um, resurrecting or reinvigorating this vision or this hope or this manifestation that you have for yourself by like doing it in a different way even. Wow. Oh my gosh. Um, you know what I always find is so interesting? You know, when, um, the messages in the bottle show up, one showed up recently. Oh my gosh. You guys, seriously, every deck, you could not, this couldn't be any more clear. You guys have someone coming in. It, it could be a past person. It could be a new person, but you have a loyal heart. You have a soulmate connection. You have something that could potentially, um, last this lifetime coming in towards you. And, you know, with this 2C and this blessed card, it is literally telling me, you know, put that message in a bottle, let it go, you know, reach out to the universe and say, Hey, look, this is what I'm manifesting. This is what I want. I'm, I'm super passionate about it. I'm super ready to receive it. Um, you know, if there's someone out there looking for me or calling for me or asking for me, please, you know, be my guide and show me the way, you know, please make it happen. Right. Um, and then trust the universe and just, you know, put the, the message in the bottle out to see and whenever it's meant to be found, whenever it will be found, it will be found. Um, and then just focus on your blessings with this blessed energy. And, you know, remember there's just countless things to be grateful for and things that we forget about. And I, I told my daughter, I was like, Man, I am never going to take for granted my sense of taste or smell ever again, <laughs> ever again. Um, you know, I was just like, oh, it's so sad. And, you know, guys, be careful because um, I have, I'm vaccinated and I still got it and I take a lot of precautions. I'm a germaphobe, so I am perpetually washing my hands and putting on, I mean, I got very tired traveling and I think I got it in the airport, but, you know, or on the plane traveling and I was kind of run down, but just remember, take good care of yourself. Like this is, this is nothing to mess with. All right. You guys are getting two nines, the nine of swords and the nine of cups, and then the universe, which is the world card energy. So definitely a completion. Um, it's a completion of worry. You know, I know I've told you guys this a million times, but they did a study, right? Where they had people write down their worries, their fears, their anxieties in a notebook. And then for five years. And so five years into the experiment, they showed them the first notebook and people were laughing. They were like, oh my God, I can't believe I was worried about that. Oh my God. 
they had forgotten half the stuff that was like consuming every moment of their day with worry and with concern. Like they, they've even done studies to be able to tell you that over 90% of the things that we worry about on a day to day basis don't ever come to pass. They don't even happen. All right. And so I see you closing out a cycle of worry, of fear and anxiety, or this is someone in your environment, right? This could be your person. Um, it can also be a mirrored energy when we're talking about the universe that is always talking about how things are connected, right? So then you have this nine of cups on the bottom of the deck, which is talking about, you know, focusing on emotional contentment within ourself instead of all the things outside ourselves that can go wrong or that could trip us up or that could be difficult to deal with or could cause our suffering. Let's instead focus on the abundance that we of who we actually are, of what our life actually holds and consists of, of the beautiful qualities and traits about ourselves that we wouldn't trade, that we don't, that, that we're, we're happy about, that we're proud about. Let's not focus on out all the threats that exist outside ourselves, right? Because um, nothing real can be threatened. That's from A Course in Miracles. And I, I, I really tell myself that kind of a lot. I feel like it is a really kind of validating or calming thing. You know, um, yeah, people can make false accusations about you. People can, you know, I don't know. But in, in the end, what is true stands. What is true is consistent. What is true lasts. What is false? What is, you know... Um, fear and illusion, it falls, it's fake, it is, it is, it is, it's based on nothing. And so, um, you know, that's why when you look at the notebooks, the truth is in five years, here this person is probably in a completely different, you know, phase of their life, probably in, in a better phase of their life, hopefully so. Looking back on this, you know, fear or anxiety that consumed them, that took up all this time in their life that never came to pass, and that they now find funny and that they now are just like laughing at themselves about like how ridiculous I can't believe that that, that was me. Do you, you know, in the power, in all of our power resides in the, in the present moment. This is the only moment we can do anything about. This is the only moment where we can have any effect of change in our lives or on our lives, right? Like the seeds that we plant now, the choices that we make now, you know, are you going to eat, eat the healthy food or are you going to eat the bad food? Are you going to go exercise or are you not going to go exercise? Are you going to take care of yourself today? Are you going to choose to spend your time with people who make you feel like crap when you walk away from them? Are you going to, um, you know, intentionally meditate or spend some time just bringing yourself back and, and resetting and and getting in touch with your intuition or are you just going to keep yourself busy and and try to escape right are you going to do your laundry for monday you know so that you don't have to think about it all weekend and then worry about it on sunday are you going to get it done or worse yet just decide not to do it and then be like god i hope i have clothes for this week you know what i mean like what how are you going to use the power of right now to set yourself up for your best life you know, are you going to double down and recommit to your manifestations and your visualizations with new hope, a new sense of vigor and belief? You know, um, are you going to trust that you are manifesting someone and just as you are, they too are manifesting you or someone is manifesting you? Um, you know what I'm saying? It's like all of those things lead to a sense of emotional contentment that like, okay, I've done everything I can do. I've turned it over to the universe. I've put it out to sea. I'm focusing on my blessings. Whenever we focus on our blessings, we're calling more blessings into our life. Whenever we focus on the lack, what we're missing, what we don't have, we're calling more lack and more of we don't have it into our life. So <clears throat> there is the completion of some sort of cycle of fear or worry that's available here, which leads to a greater sense of emotional contentment. When we're in the nine of cups, we are definitely ready for the 10 of cups. When we're in the nine of cups, it means that, you know, we, we have gotten ourselves to a certain place that, you know, is basically saying we are ready for what comes next. Wow. Um, and with the moon card, we may not know what comes next. Wow. Oh my God. You know, fear is a spiritual teacher, right? 
fear is worry, anxiety, that, that is its own kind of suffering, right? And suffering has a tendency to be a spiritual teacher. With the Hierophant coming on the Nine of Swords, this is like saying, you know, um, how, you know, we have learned a lot from the things that have put us in this place where we couldn't sleep, where we couldn't, you know, we, we learned that we don't want to be that way. We learned that we don't want to spend our existence in that way, right? And so with the Hierophant, it, it's kind of, it's one of those energies where it's like, it may have propelled us to find a different way. Michael Singer, for example, you guys, like seriously, if you're up in your head and you can't sleep, go on YouTube and just put Michael Singer in your little search bar and find him. That's what I do. And I think it's really helpful. Um, and there's, you know, or do yoga nidra and just give yourself space from your thoughts. Um, but anyway, um, there's just, it's like, I had to seek out a better way. And now that I have found a better way to exist rather than just living in fear and worry all of the time, um, I'm not afraid of the unknown. And, and you know, with the universe here and the moon card, it's kind of like, you know, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. And I know that I am stronger than my fear. I know now that I can overcome my fear. I've also learned some kind of tool here with the Hierophant to not let fear and worry and anxiety get the better of me. With the devil on the bottom of the deck, it feels like this is something that kept you stuck. Wow. Oh my God. With the six of pentacles, that just, oh man, that just does something to me. Wow, wow, wow. The Six of Pentacles, you guys, is an energy of where the universe is like return, it's return on your karma. So like if you're someone who's been putting a lot of love out there and has had really good intentions and has been, you know, trying to find the love or the commonality in people around you or um, has, you know, tried to do unto others as you would have them do unto you or whatever, these things don't always come back from where you put them or where you gave them, but they do come back to you. The universe is a very balanced place. And, um, and so, you know, freeing yourself from the fear and anxiety gives the universe that space to give you back. It, it, it's like where, when you're looking at your future with the moon card, right? And you're, you know, you're, you've closed out a cycle. So you're starting a new cycle and the cycle is unknown to you. You're not really sure what to expect. You don't really know where it's taking you. You don't really know, you know, there are certain maybe like mainstays in your life, things that probably won't change. But other than that, it's sort of all out there. You're just not sure. Well, the moon can have you look at things in two different ways, right? It can have you look at it like, oh, it's dark out there. I can't see anything. I'm afraid of the dark. Or it can have you say, wow, it's dark out there. There are unlimited possibilities. There are so many things that could go right or could go better than I hoped or I imagined or I dreamed um, that, that, you know, the, the universe is full of possibilities. The universe is limitless. Um, and so, you know, I, I may want to kind of do my job and manifest it, give the, the universe some direction as to what I'm looking for or what I'm hoping for in this moment. Wow. Another card that talks about karma coming back around. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> the justice card you're getting. Wow. With the 10 of swords in reverse and the ace of wands upright. Um, you know, when whenever we see Lady Justice, it, it can mean that there was an injustice, right? Because we don't need things to be balanced out or kind of rectified if nothing ever went wrong. You guys, I give up. I give up. Look at this. You have the Queen of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles again. Again. I, I literally don't even... I, I like... I don't even know what to say. I feel you're getting a life partner. The king and queen of pentacles are the husband and wife of tarot. And you guys keep getting them in the same reading over and over and over and over and over again. Um, <clears throat> I just don't know what to say. All right. So um, 
but so justice sort of implies that there has been an injustice, right? It means that things haven't always gone your way in the past. Things haven't always been, you know, quote unquote fair. Well, things are never fair. So give up on that idea, but things balance out. It all comes out in the wash or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, you know, there, there may be moments of just absolute joy or absolute like bliss. Um, and then there may be moments that aren't so great. Right. But, but in the end, it sort of balances out. And whenever I see the justice, it's like, okay, it's time for the good things to start happening here. It's time for, you know, that scale to get a review, you know, are, are you, have you given too much and not received enough? Have you, you know, that kind of a thing. And with the queen of pentacles, <clears throat> there's this vision. Well, I don't know. Vision is the right word, but <sighs> I guess I'm going to use the word vision because I can't think of the word that I want to use. Um, but <clears throat> that we hold for ourselves. That is like, this is what I deserve, right? This is what I'm worth. This is my value. You know, this is the value of what I have given. You know, this is the value of what I have offered the world, right? And that it has something to do with what I deserve to receive here or what will balance out the scales, right? And so <clears throat> in some ways, it is in the eye of the beholder. If you don't believe in your own worth or your own value, then the universe can't possibly right the wrong because, <sighs> because ultimately you can't receive it because you don't believe you deserve it. You have to believe you deserve it in order to be able to receive it. And so with the queen of pentacles and justice here, it's like, this is the time to really remind yourself of the value of what you have given, the value of who you are and what you do have to offer. And, you know, not just the world, but yourself. Um, because like we are divine and we are all connected and we're connected to the universe. So if we're giving to ourselves, if we are self loving and we are acknowledging the miracle that is who we are, then we are also by way of that acknowledging the miracle that is the universe and the divinity of, of, and the limitlessness of all that exists. You can't say it for yourself, but not for your neighbor. You can't say it for yourself, but not your creator. You know, you're acknowledging all the same things when you're acknowledging it within yourself. That's why it's so freaking important. Um, and so in order to receive this balancing out, in order to receive what the universe is trying to give you as far as return on your karma, you have to hold a space for yourself that acknowledges that you deserve it. Um, not that you're owed it, not that, you know, um, you know, whatever, but that you, you are worthy of, of receiving it. Um, and that you believe in it, you know? So you have the 10 of swords with the four of wands. You definitely have a very strong partnership coming in here and it is coming in at the completion of this cycle. When we started off this reading, you had two nines and the universe card. So this means that you're at the end of the cycle. When you start seeing the tens, it's talking about, okay, it's, it's over. And now we're releasing it and now we're letting it go. Because the ten of swords is in reverse, it's letting me know that there is some residual aspect, probably mental, that you're still holding on to or that you're still carrying. Like, um, it's an opportunity just to even ask your angels, your spirit guides, and your saints to help you and especially with the full moon that's upcoming here in your own sign um it's a real opportunity to say please help me release anything that is no longer serving me anything that is ready to be let go i ask that on every full moon of my spirit guides of the saints of the angels of whomever you know i have a whole litany of people that i hope to i ask to help me um because you have to release in order to make space for new and it looks like with the four of wands, you have a very significant relationship that's coming in at the completion of this cycle. 
and it is a very strong opportunity. You have Ace of Wands. It is something that you have manifested. It is something that you do deeply desire. And this Ace is coming at that completion. You know what I'm saying? It is, you know, something that you desire is coming at the end of this cycle. And with the king and queen of pentacles, this divine pair, this husband and wife of the tarot, it feels like a long-term partnership that is good, that is solid, that is stable, and that has a lot to really offer you. Wow, okay. <clears throat> You have the Knight of Swords in reverse with the Four of Swords in reverse with the Devil energy. And this can be, you know, obviously someone else's energy. This can even be a past relationship with someone who um, things may have moved very quickly with this person to begin with and then come to an abrupt halt because this person was unwilling to do their healing work. This person was stuck. Um, let me just clarify Yeah, with the, oh, they could have had a third party situation with, um, oh Lord, some of you may be dealing with a Leo. This is a situation where, um, with the Knight of Swords in reverse, it's like someone who really knows what to say. They may even be a bit of a master communicator. Like, um, they know how to kind of like move mountains with their words and they may also be someone who moves very fast. A lot of times when relationships move very fast, there's a, a toxic element to them. And it's like usually codependency. Um, that's what I see or that's what I believe. Um, it doesn't mean that that's the case here or that that's true. But there is with the sun on this Knight of Swords in reverse, there is some clarity. There is, um, it's like you are seeing it for the truth. You understand it now. Um, especially with these flowers under the sun card, it's just giving me these, this energy of, you know, you opening up to receive the clarity, you opening up to healing and to clarity and to kind of like inner peace about the situation. With the four of swords in reverse, I feel like this is this person who, um, and also with the sun card on the knight of swords in reverse, sorry, I wanted to say this. It's almost like this euphoria when it's all working out, when this person is saying what you want to hear, it's like, there's nothing bad, you know, there's nothing to be worried about. There's nothing to be concerned about. It's almost that energy of it's too good to be true. Um, and then you have the four of swords in reverse being clarified by the king of wands in reverse. It's like, this person hasn't healed. So what is lacking is they either may even say to you, I don't know what I want, or they may um, be like, well, I know what I want, but I just can't, you know, I'm, I'm tied up. You know, when the King of Wands is upright, they know what they want and they're going after it. Um, it could be someone who's charming. It could be someone who's handsome or pretty. It could be someone who you know, um, uses that charm, uses the fact that they know that they hold what you desire in their hands to keep you, um, you know, in a space where you're, uh, like, where you're, just hoping that they're going to give it to you. It's like you're focused on the wand instead of them. Um, with the four of swords in reverse, this can also be someone that you haven't spoken to in a while or you haven't been speaking to. There's been some kind of separation. This may be coming around. Um, with the devil, like I said, when things move very quickly in a relationship, when it's like, I just met you and now I just want to spend every waking moment with you and oh my god you're so perfect and you're so perfect and this is so perfect and wow we want the same things and it's almost like a false um sense of everything is perfect like i don't know if you guys have watched love is blind but you know it's kind of like almost this sense that sort of develops in the pods of just like you know there's no outside influence there's no difficulty there's no challenge there's no nothing it's almost like this false sense of 
nothing can touch us or you know what I mean? Like we're just so perfect together, but it's, there's nothing challenging it. With the three of cups, this could be someone who either really likes to socialize or someone who has another person or someone on the side um, that they feel stuck to or that they may even sort of incorporate into some type of top toxic cycle. Relationship cycle. Wow. I'm going to go ahead and clarify this. You're getting the star and the five of pentacles. You know, I don't know if you guys have ever looked at the Seven of Wands in the Rider Waite deck, but the guy has two different shoes on, or it's like, he's got like a sock on on one foot and not on the other. I can't remember what it is exactly, but it's like there's a difference between the two shoes. And in this deck, it like only shows you the shoes. It doesn't even show you Seven Wands. And so it just, it like, it highlights to me that there's like a mismatch with this person, or there's like... I don't mean between the two of you, I mean between what they say and what they do or, um, you know, having the desire for something but then not taking action on it. You know, when you desire something, when you're in a healthy, secure place and you desire something, you go for it. You, you, you take action on it. And so when someone is like, oh, no, no, I want this, I'm passionate for it, but you know, I, I just, I got to get like a closed toed shoe here before I can actually make a move on it. Or, you know, it's like I keep the, this um, ability to make an excuse for why I'm not taking action on it. Um, with the star card, you've got the knight of pentacles and with the five of cups, I mean the five of pentacles, you have the king of cups. Sorry guys. I think, I don't know what's happening. Um, anyway, um, this is talking about when we really want something and we really have a sense of hope and optimism about it, it can be hard to hold back or it can be hard to not just go all the way or just go for it. Just like, you know, let the energy flow. But there is something about slow and steady winning the race, right? The Knight of Pentacles is the only knight in the entire tarot deck that always crosses the finish line. It may take him a while to get there, but he's always going to cross. He's the most reliable knight. And with this star card here, it's kind of like someone who has reverence that, wow, this is what I really, 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 really want. And um, therefore, instead of just being a glutton and soaking myself in it and marinating in it and, and just consuming it all at one time. I'm going to savor it. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to put effort in day in and day out. I'm going to show up with my actions and I'm going to, we may take small steps and it may take us a while to get there, but I'm going to enjoy it and I'm going to be reliable and I'm going to prove myself as a dependable person. Um, so yeah, then we have the five of pentacles with the king of cups and this is like, okay, <clears throat> someone who, we all have those sort of key critical fears, right? We all have the fear of abandonment. We all have the fear of intimacy. We all, we all have them. It's just on what part of the spectrum are we? And, you know, how does it affect us? You know, for some people, it makes them not want to get emotionally involved with anyone because they're sure that that person's going to abandon them and disappoint them. For other people, it needs, it means that they need constant reassurance and they're super anxious and they're like, please, you know, tell me again that you love me. Please tell me again that this is going to work out. Please tell me, you know, make me feel better. Make me feel more secure. Make me feel, you know, it's like a never ending pit of it. And 
when you see the King of Cups, you see someone who has mastered their emotion. So it's not that they don't have the fear of, of intimacy or the fear of abandonment or, or whatever. It's not that they don't have those things. And it's not that they have never been abandoned um, or rejected or whatever. It's that they have learned how to stay steady in those circumstances and situations. They have learned how to show up for themselves, how to be there for themselves, how to regulate those emotions so that they don't get triggered and they're not reactionary. And then you see on the bottom of the deck, the King of Wands upright, which is somebody who knows what they want and they go after it. So Pisces, I feel like you have someone coming in who is understanding of and, and empathetic and compassionate um, because that's what happens when you have the Five of Pentacles and the King of Cups. It's someone who can understand how you feel because they have been there too. But it's not that they're still there or they're always there or that they allow themselves to be triggered by it. They have figured out how to be secure. And, you know, I'll say it once, I'll say it again, always on this channel. Remember, guys, the one thing you have control over is your attachment style. No matter where you fall on the attachment scale, right, you can move to a more secure attachment style. That's the one thing we can change. It does take work and it does, you know, a lot of times it takes a good partner who wants to get there with you, right? Um, but you can do it yourself. And um, this is someone who has put the work in and who has empathy and compassion and who is saying, look, I don't need some whirlwind romance. You know, I did that. That was toxic. You know, I need something that is dependable, that is reliable and that, you know, I'm always cognizant of the fact that this is what I asked for. This is what I manifested. This is what I wanted this is what I've asked for. And this is fate's answer for me, this, this relationship, this connection. And in that, even there is such a sense of gratitude. There is such a sense of, of abundance in that energy. And because it is that, and I have such a deep reverence for that. And because I understand its place in my life, I'm going to show up for it day in and day out. I'm going to invest in it and I'm going to show up for it. And this may be even Pisces, like giving someone the space to be this person to you and for you. But you got somebody coming in. All right, <clears throat> let me get you some message cards. Keep manifesting, Pisces. If you're dealing with the water sign, you're getting second chance. I feel so happy with you. Someone is secretly yearning for you. Someone, what you are seeking is seeking you. And I still have feelings for you. So someone that you've been manifesting may be manifesting you. You also got your intellect arouses me. All right. If you're dealing with a fire sign, Pisces. I am in a committed relationship. I don't know how to feel. I miss seeing you. I compare others to you. And someone in this connection is gripped by obsessive thoughts. Okay. If you are dealing with an earth sign, you are getting clear your energy field and focus on yourself before acting. I need security. I know I messed up everything. I don't want to let you go. I left before you could leave me. I miss being with you. I am becoming a better person. And does this situation align with your values and morals? And if you are dealing with an air sign, hold on, you guys got a flipper. There it is. Okay, I would do it all again. Try something you've never done before. My life is not as together as it seems. You've done the work, Abund abundance flows to you. I hid who I really am from you, and I have trouble with intimacy. 
All right, Pisces, this is what I have for you today. I hope it helps. I hope it brings you some peace and some clarity. If it does, let me know. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Manifest away. All right, until next time, guys. All my best. Bye-bye.